Thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget, like and subscribe. They recap Jamie Hader returning it all in, laying out the entire Knight family, which is an accomplishment. It's a lot of badasses to lay out. Learning Tree versus the Iron Savages. Fortunately short, Jericho is wrestling in his ruined jacket. Yeah, he was so, he was so worried about his jacket that he wrestled in it. Of course, he was only in there for like a second, then he tagged out. Yes, and uh, tagged back to the end. Keith laid out jacked with a diamond dust. Jericho pinned him with the arrogant cover. Then it was time for the angle. Jericho reminds us all about his jacket and the $7,000 Orange owes him and the backpack. It reveals the contents of the backpack that Orange has been carrying around are in fact, or is in fact a photo of himself with his former best friends. Yeah. Chuck E. T. And you know, this Orange Cassidy, his, his gimmick is that he doesn't give a shit about anything. He's got his hands in his pockets. He doesn't care. Doesn't try. Just, he don't care about nothing. But if you watch AEW, nobody cares more than Orange Cassidy. The exception of maybe the hangman. That guy cares a lot. But man, this Orange Cassidy is always, he's always, everything's always bothering him. He's, he's a very sensitive fella. He really cares a lot till the bell rings. So, your problem, Orange Cassidy, Jericho says, you are still obsessed with friendship. There are no friends in pro wrestling. And if you think you have friends, you are probably being used. And when he says this, Big Bill turns, as if to say, Hey! He's catching on to this Jericho fella. But that's for the future. For now, Jericho demands, Give me my cash, Orange Cassidy. Get your hands out of your pockets and your head out of your ass. Pay me my money. Yeah. I want my cash. Yes. So Orange appears on the screen, cleans out his pockets. He's got like a dollar fifty. Says, "I do have your seven thousand dollars, or at least my friends do. They're bringing it in now." And Mark Briscoe and Kyle O'Reilly show up with a f uh, backhoe or forklift or uh, some kind of construction equipment, and they're driving towards this car. And I'm thinking, "Oh man, this is gonna be awesome." And they dump seven thousand dollars in pennies oh, into this stop. convertible Bentley. They dropped about five hundred dollars worth, and nothing happened. No, I think they thought. Hey, be, listen, if you oh. had a Bentley and someone threw a bunch of coins at it, it'd probably do a number on the paint job and all. But as far as destroying cars goes in the history of wrestling, this is low on the list. This is the bottom. <laughs> I, to name another time that someone's car, like something happened to it. That was less. Remember, whatever than this one. In Ohio, in Ohio Valley Wrestling, decades, like twenty-five years ago, maybe more. Eminem won. Uh, was it Johnny Jeter's car? No, it was Matt Capitelli. Matt Capitelli's car. They won it for like twenty-four hours. And keep in mind, this was Ohio Valley. These guys were actually all broke. They could not actually afford to destroy someone's car. So, like, they got fast food, and this food is gross. And then they rubbed on the windows. That was more destructive than what happened to Jericho's Bentley here. I don't know about that. He's going to have to take that thing get a detail after that. Mm, a yeah. lot of coins everywhere. Yeah, I think they all expected more carnage than they got, but Jericho sold How? it. How? <laughs> you dropped coins on a car. How, what more carnage were you expecting? Something glass to break, somehow. They should have had $7,000 worth of orange juice that they spilled on that car. That would have been more effective. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Jericho sold it like it had been smushed flat. <laughs> yeah. Like Sid standing on top of his crushed cube car. Now, if, if for the next four weeks they have vignettes of him picking out the pennies one at a time, and he's got like, <laughs> then we can make it work. For every one of these pennies, Orange Cassidy, yeah. I'm going to make you cry. I'm going to make you cry twice. He's Three by, he's by hand times. taking all of the pennies out of this car. One by God Out of one. every little crevice, crevasse. You know, you drop some shit between the seats and you got to try and get it underneath that seat. He's got to do that with all those coins. That might make it work. So Nigel McGuinness comes out for a promo. There will not be an AEW World Title match at Grand Slam this year, he says. That's not good for AEW. An event like this, the World Champion should at least compete. So he brings up how many years he has had to watch Danielson's career. He's an afterthought to Danielson's success. It should have been his. Danielson is afraid of me, but Tony Khan is not afraid and knows a money match when he sees one. Because his character is a crazy maniac. But he doesn't care about everyone's well-being. So at Grand Slam, it will be Danielson versus McGinnis. Yes. And everyone cheers. 
Hey, it was a hell of a promo. Except me. It's a big match. Because this makes zero sense. It does make absolutely no sense whatsoever, but... Like, opposite of sense. Yeah. So I'm I'm praying this turns out to be some kind of heel swerve. No, it's not, dude. They're doing the match. They're selling tickets to the goddamn show. And you think Oasis is going to be at Arthur Ashe Stadium? Uh, Probably. We'll see about that. We will see about that. I think he just meant the theme. I don't think he meant the actual band was going to be there. That's how I took it. Well, that's the least of our problems. Where is Lenny? Should be here trying to defend this. But he took the day off, apparently. So anyway, the ball is in your court, Brian, he says. And so uh, we're waiting to hear Danielson's response. Hook does a promo from the street somewhere. He has lost respect for Roderick Strong, jumped him from behind, and then whined about a referee's call. He's been challenging Roddy and waiting for him to accept. We have the Casino Gauntlet Tag Team match. Not as great as, uh, for example, the All-In Casino Gauntlet match, which is to be expected. There were no huge surprises here. There was a regular act that got put over strong and got a huge pop, but no, nobody debuted or returned or anything. All right, so before we do that, right. uh, Grand Slam is currently at 4,400 tickets. Last year's Grand Slam sold 11,263. Hmm. We're at 4,400 with, let's see, 11 days left? 13 days left. Yeah. So, you know, obviously a lot of this was done because we got to sell some tickets. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what these matches and changes mean for attendance as we uh, head to the show September 25th. So, yes, this uh, this gauntlet, mm-hmm. I mean, it was it was fun enough. It was a fine TV main event. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't say it was great, but no. it was fun. Uh, the Righteous remind you how good their wrestling is and how bad their gimmick is. Because whenever I see them, I think, oh, God, it's the Righteous. Then they start to wrestle. I'm like, wait a minute. They're very good. Well, it's not just you, bro. I mean, <laughs> FTR and Will Ospreay and Kyle Fletcher start. Yeah. And then out come Vincent and Dutch. And, I mean, they got zero reaction. And then Taven and Bennett came out. Zero reaction. And the Acclaim got a pop. MXM actually got a pretty big pop. And the biggest pop, yes. the fucking Outrunners. By design, because yes. like the, 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 most of the teams are already in. And uh, in fact, almost everyone was in. Uh, and uh, they did a 16 men down or however many were in the ring. So there was nothing happening. And the count- timer appears on the screen. Out come the Outrunners in Kentucky in front of the Ohio Valley crowd. And they get a massive pop. And they hit this ring, and you've never seen Babyface Fire. Like, well, you have, but from from the 80s. And they're back to back. And I would go back to the 70s since they ran wild with body slams. They punches and body slams. Bump and feed, bump and feed. It was a thing of beauty. And it occurred to me that if you're paying attention to the World of Wrestling, we are getting FTR versus Midnight Heat and probably FTR versus Outrunners in the same year. Yeah. Glorious. Glorious stuff. So there is an OVW chant, in fact. The Grizzled Young Veterans are technically the last team in, although they never get past the stage where FTR meets them. They all brawl to the back. They're fighting a collision this week. So the Outrunners run wild, hit their finish, but the Righteous righteous break of the pin. And if you want to give the Outrunners a win, the Righteous are a great opponent to do that. There is a parade of finishers, and I think it was Dante Martin that splashed Kyle Fletcher, but when he made the cover, Osprey struck with a hidden blade. Fletcher rolled him up and pinned him. So it is Fletcher and Osprey versus the Bucks at Grand Slam. And they're running down the card for that show. And I'll repeat this. Shivani said it will be Nigel McGuinness versus Brian Danielson if Brian Danielson can make it. Don't read too much into this, brother. The match is happening. I'm just saying what they told me. Yes. As I'm reporting the facts as I heard them. Well, those are the facts. As I heard them. But he's going to be ready. Mm. Yes. All right. Yeah, I thought it was... Um, I mean, I, I enjoyed the show. Yeah. But it certainly was not like... You know, I usually will go on to the board... And I'll see what people think about the show before I watch it, because mm. I watch it late. And uh, it was kind of, it was a little bit hit or miss, but there were like a couple of people that said, you know, the first first 90 minutes of the show is one of the greatest dynamites ever. Of this show? And then it kind of went off a cliff in the last half hour. Mm. And I watch it, and I, I don't have any idea what they were talking about. The first 90 minutes were not even close to the best dynamites of all time. No. The whole show was just like, fine. Yeah. It was a fine show. It had one completely nonsensical angle, but hey, at the end of the day, the nonsensical angle is setting up two matches, 
which are going to be very fun matches. So I can only complain so much. So that was a fun, if forgettable, episode of Dynamite for the most part. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.